The theme of today's summit is Franchise 101, building one and buying one. There's something about buying into a business model that tried and tested. How does that take to create a franchise? Key questions that we will want to answer today is, do franchise businesses have a greater survival rate than brand new ones? Should we invest in existing franchise brands to start our own? How do we overcome hurdles like finance to start our franchise? Today, we are live from Josie Maboneng, but we are joined by our entrepreneurs in Rustenburg in the Northwest province, by our lovely colleague, Gitu Metsi. We'll be engaging with our people that side. Hi, Matsi, and good morning, entrepreneurs. I'm joined by many amazing entrepreneurs doing amazing things. In the day. They've got lots of questions for us, lots of to make, so we are all looking forward to see what we do during the summit. We want you to talk to us, we want you to engage with us, and if you're joining us via YouTube or Facebook Live, please join the conversation by posting in the comment section. Tweet us at IAAESA using the hashtag IAAE Summit. Those who are on our data free stream, you can send a WhatsApp on 078 350 0768. The questions that we would like for you to answer is Do you want to start your own brand or a franchise? Do you want to buy into an existing franchise? And you need to tell us why. First, to set the scene for us and teach us a few things about franchising, I'd like to introduce you to our exciting animated game show, Mind Your Business. Mind Your Business is a fun SMME game show, Yadi Popai, where three lucky business owners use their entrepreneurial skills and experience to stand a chance of winning one animated million. Contestants must answer a series of business-related questions as fast as they can. The contestants with the most correct answers at the end of the summit wins. Over to you, Tolimali. Thank you, Matsi, Sanbonani, Bumelang Entrepreneurs. Welcome to Mind Your Business. The game show where we, as entrepreneurs, educate ourselves on what's right, what's wrong, and make sense of what's in between. Let's meet our exciting entrepreneurs competing for a grand prize of one million rand. We have Ayanda Mieni, Lucas Hartley, and April Nanabai. This is simple. Each correct answer is worth 50 points. The entrepreneur with the most points at the end of the I Am an Entrepreneur Summit series wins. Let the games begin. In franchising, after you get your franchise license, what other fees can you expect to pay the franchiser monthly? A. Royalty fees. B. Marketing and advertising fees. C. Both A and B. D. Dololo. Ayanda. I see you went with option C. Why? Okay, so Tolly, I own a fast food franchise, ne? And I pay both your royalty fees and your advertising fees. And it goes towards your things like ongoing support, research and development, and e admin, which is done on a group level. I'm a level. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I chose option C. Well done, Ayanda. 50 points to you. Next question. Entrepreneurship has pros and cons. When it comes to franchising, there are no cons. A. True. B. False. Or C. Absolute no cons. April, you went with false. Please tell us why. Tully, all businesses have pros and cons. In fact, a good franchiser will conduct market research before selling a new outlet. It's just less risky that way because you're buying into a proven business case. But you're not really your own boss and not all franchises have great training and problem resolution. So you see, pros and cons, guys. Pros and cons. Ooh, April, you are right on the money. 50 points to you. 
Well, that's it from us today at Mind Your Business. Tune in again next time to see which entrepreneur will be one step closer to winning that one million rand. Back to you in studio, Mati. What fun. Thank you, Tolly Mali. We will catch up with you and our amazing contestants in the upcoming summits. Now to set the scene, we had an interview with Sheldon Thatchell, a man with a vision, founder of Legends Barbershop. He will be telling us about the story behind his franchise dream. Hi guys, my name is Sheldon. I'm the founder of Legends Barbershop. Legends Barbershop started out on a local stoop in a community called the Agrado Park. It was about 20, 2011. And during this time, I actually learned what's the key to running a business. And one of the things that I've learned is basically building a relationship with somebody. And that's what made a difference from the beginning and what made us stand out. Although we used to do dope hairstyles and everything, but to have that person come back week after week and basically to have that, that legendary experience, is what we call it, it's just to build that relationship with that person and to maintain that relationship over the course of the years. Although we had our hiccups along the way, I mean, uh, we closed down 20, 2012 and we relaunched again 2014. And ever since 2014, we've been going ever since. So when I started initially, I mean, uh, they must never to build a franchise business. The goal back then when I relaunched 2014 was to have about five stores in five years and, and these stores would obviously be uh, corporate-owned stores. And that was the vision. Uh, we surpassed that by, I think we're standing on around 40 stores to say, but it never had come to a point where we started and we said now we want to franchise up until 2019. When, uh, when a close friend of mine uh, by the name of Ricky Rick, he actually advised, says, why don't you think of uh, franchising? And I was like, that's actually a good idea. Because of the workload that became too much on myself, on my team, it would be impossible to manage 50 odd stores. And with us franchising, we realized that, that getting the right people to basically run the stores, getting the right operators, that that would basically be hands-on and have that relationship that Sheldon would have with the store, with the staff members, that would be valuable. And that's the reason why consistency is, is key. So I think uh, with the franchising part, there has definitely played a huge role. I think 50% of our stores now are franchise. The goal is basically to have 70% uh, have of of the stores, franchise and 30% group owned. This actually helps us with growth, with management. It just gives us basically the collateral to grow as fast as we would like to grow. It's one of our biggest lessons as getting the right franchise to run the business is basically getting the right minded people where they, they in it for the business. They have a huge love for people and profit is basically just secondary to them. So those are the type of people that we look at. We have burned our fingers. <laughs> and during this time, it's, it's basically learning curves, you understand? And you look into just making the process more stringent so we can suss out the right people that will be joining our family. One of the main thing, if you want to scale, if you want to grow your business, as to what Legends is today, one of the key things that you have to do is basically build a good, good foundation. And basically to build a good foundation, it does take some time. Many people think Legends is overnight success, but it took many years to get to 40 stores. The another thing that I would say is basically get proper people in place. Always try to get people that's better than you. Be driven by passion. Passion is what drives everything. I mean, you can have all the money in the world, but I mean, if passion is not your key driver, it doesn't make sense. Then get the right foundation, get a proper management team around you, and also be driven by passion. What a living legend, no pun intended. It all started as an idea that turned into a business now Sheldon is building his empire and living his dream. We're now going to take a little break before we go to the next exciting segments. My advice would be don't start something because you're passionate about it. it I, I say it's the opposite. 
Start something that we don't need to wake you up in the middle of the night for. You didn't have to drive here. The all-new Renault Triber. Space for everything. Renault, most fuel-efficient brand in SA. SA's low-price champion brings you SA's newest cellular network. Introducing Connect Mobile. Long-life milk and low long-life data with 60 days expiry. Sugar-free? How about 100 megs free every month for six months? And with extra savings, you get up to 25% extra free airtime and data every time you recharge. Join Connect Mobile in store today and get what you've always wanted. Welcome back to I Am an Entrepreneur Summit in association with FMB. Viewpoint is coming up, but first let me check in on some of your very exciting comments. Andrew Mo, looking forward to it. Hashtag I am an entrepreneur. And we also have a comment from Jan van der Ves, Jan van der Vestazen. Morning all, very excited to hear more. We also have a comment from Pumola Mokwele, and that is my mother. And she says, good morning, I'm here looking forward to a great session. We also have Faith Mkombe. We are ready to start the day with a bang. Thank you all. Please do join us, do become part of the conversation. We want you right here. We would like to hear from you if you're joining us from YouTube on or Facebook Live by posting in the comment section via Twitter at IAAESA using the hashtag IAAE Summit and via our data free stream, send us a WhatsApp on 078 350 0768. Our next segment is Viewpoint, hosted by esteemed broadcaster Jeremy Maggs. In Viewpoint, we get to unpack the views and perspectives of successful and accomplished entrepreneurs and the ways in which they have navigated very challenging uh, paths through their entrepreneurial paths. Over to you, Jeremy. Hello, and a very warm welcome to Viewpoint, where we try to understand unlock and I guess repackage the key secrets of successful people. We want to give you the real and the correct tools that you can apply when dealing with the challenges that you face on your own particular entrepreneurship journey. My name is Jeremy Maggs and in today's show we're going to deal with franchising. It is a fascinating topic. Also about the leveraging of an established brand to grow and develop your own business. So we have two guests with us today. Both have an in-depth understanding of franchising from building and managing them to the all-important aspect of financing them. So I want to welcome Mwezi Mkangwane, investor in 86 Public Pizzeria, uh, the brand and franchise owner of that particular outfit in Randburg here in Johannesburg, as well as franchise finance expert, head of FNB Franchise Financing, Mone Kronia. Well, Mwezi, to you first of all, and I love a good food story. <laughs> so I want to start off with 86 Public. How did you get involved? To get the business off the ground, we were saved by the fact that um, a lot of our friends had been like, we want to uh, enjoy a vibe, but we've been waiting for someone to support. Our core business is, is the vibe, is the cocktails, is the pizza, and then the ribs and the wings, and being able to have a, a third place to meet with your friends. Mone, warm welcome to you. Thank you. Let's talk a little. You're in the business of financing franchises. What kind of industries then, right now, um, as we go into year two of the lockdown, is FNB interested in? Jeremy, franchising has over the years have shown that they it's, it's resilient. Um, it's industry has been performing extremely well. We've unfortunately we've seen the restaurant industry taking taking strain, and and but also it gives opportunity for new growth. It gives opportunity for people to be innovative in what they do. And then what we've seen is is that people stick to brands they know, but also looking for something new, which I think which is what COVID told us. Um, the fast food industry has been doing extremely well. Um, I'm talking the quick service restaurants, the drive-through areas, they've been performing. I think a lot of people 
because of lockdown, they, they, they defaulted to take away the Uber Eats and Mr. Deliveries of the world to stay, to stay safe in, indoors. Um, so from a franchise perspective, retail grocery, extremely well, hardware construction. Um, we, we believe that people aren't going away, so they walk around in their houses or their homes and they, they tend to see what's broken and they, they fix that. Mm. Um, that. That's been doing very well. And then the second and the automotive side also doing doing extremely well. And then the fuel, the fuel aspect of franchising. What's the biggest mistake you've made so far? Because there'll be many to come. Um, I think some of the, the biggest mistake was not thinking it's going to be as hands-on, mm. especially at the mm. beginning of, I think, um, first two months, I, first two months of getting into the business, I still had a full-time job. I still had a, another full-time job, a uh, full-time corporate job, but it was, the balance was, was, was getting a bit tough and you have to have a control of your own time if you're going to be in a, in, in a possibly franchising business in, in this kind of space because you need to be able to come in and, um, and speak on behalf of the business. Surely in a time when risk and risk mitigation is so top of mind for people, it's better to go for something which is tried and tested Wesley, no disrespect to your brand, <laughs> but it's an important strategic decision that an entrepreneur would have to make. I think it comes back to, you mentioned networks, and I think that what, that's what franchising is. You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And I think that that helps a lot, and that takes away the risk from, from entering into a business and, and you need to do everything by yourself. I know a lot of franchisees complain about the fees they need to pay, but at the end of the day, to start a new business today costs a lot of money. Entering into franchising, all that pain has been taken away. Look, there's no 100% there's no, uh, um, success record. We're going to talk about brand building in just a moment, but typically what causes a franchise to fail? Bad location. Mm. Unfortunately, that, that happens. Bad location. Um, and, and, and then a franchisee buying into a brand that he does not believe in or not understanding what's expected from him. For I always take the example, don't go into the restaurant industry if you don't want to work evenings, for example. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and unfortunately... I mean, it's funny, but it's a brilliant point. Yeah. We, unfortunately, we've yeah. we seen those stories. We see people that they, they're used to working eight to five. Now they take their pension money, which they've built up over many years, and they buy a restaurant or they buy a pub. And, and, and what I always tell p uh, potential franchisees is it's an agreement or it's a decision you need to make with your partner, your spouse, whoever, because your life has changed. It's not just you take holiday when you want to take holiday. I mean, if you buy into a franchise, you need to work those offers or those, those hours, and it's an active investment. You can't decide when and what or when you want to go to the store. So you need to be very involved. But I think, number one, unfortunately, these days, definitely location plays, plays, plays a big role. Mornay, let's talk a little bit now about barriers to entry and what would those typical barriers, I wonder, be? Access to capital. Mm. I think I think I think that's 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 the biggest barrier, and I think where where we are lacking against the rest of the world is we haven't got real entry level franchising. It's very expensive in South Africa to enter into the franchise Explain that industry. To us. What is an entry level franchise? So, um, in in South Africa, your typical franchise investment is anything from two million, three million, four million to buy into an entry level franchise. Where, if you look at the states and if you look at Australia and those places, where I mean, we sh we should actually compare ourselves with Australia. You can buy a franchise for for in in, in rand terms for five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand. So. That's a problem. Our setup costs are extremely high. Uh, rental space, I mean, we, 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 we talked about rental space. Rental space is extremely uh, expensive. So those are the things. I would say space and access to capital. The franchise zone determines the owner's contribution. And I think that's where a lot of people sometimes get it wrong. They think the bank determines the owner's contribution, and it's not the bank. So the franchisee and the norm in franchising these days is plus minus 50%. So if you look at a setup of, of, of 2 million rand, you need to put down 1 million rand unencumbered cash. And that's sometimes when the difficulty comes in. Not really with getting the funding from the bank. It's getting access to that 
unencumbered cash that needs to be put down, which is determined by the franchisor. Let's talk a little bit about the ongoing partnership then between the, uh, the person who's running the business and uh, the franchisor. Mm. Um, you've got some experience in that space. Yeah. Often, I imagine, uh, Mona, it can become a little tense and fractious once the honeymoon period is yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. We, we refer to a tripartite between franchisor, franchisee, and bank. Mm. Uh, it's, it's extremely important where, where there needs to be open communication. I think the difficulty we're facing these days is the poppy protection of personal information. It makes it difficult to sometimes share these, these kind of information between franchisor, franchisee, and bank. But it's extremely important for a franchisee and a franchisor to have an open relationship. You mentioned the honeymoon phase. You know, you see it when, when the franchisee makes money, he's extremely happy. It's the best brand he's built, uh, he's bought into. When times are tough, the franchisor is bad, bad brand, the franchisor doesn't know what he's doing. But where we've seen where it's working very well is where the franchisor allows the franchisee some form of freedom in living out their passion and coming up with new ideas. Not going outside the lines, because that's why it's franchise, you need that consistency. But where you've got that, joint working relationship where a franchisee can come up with an idea and present it to the franchisor and the franchisor listens. That's where we see a very good relationship between franchisor and franchisees, and those brands are actually doing extremely well. Typically, where does the conflict arise then? Is, is it when the franchisee wants to go outside the lines? Yes, yes. And, and vice versa, if the yeah. franchisor does, is not, uh, doesn't want to listen. I mean, I think it's common knowledge, but uh, breakfast in McDonald's was a franchisee idea. Mm. It didn't come from a franchisor, and the franchisor didn't want to actually do breakfast. And now breakfast is probably one of the best-selling sure. items yeah. on a McDonald's menu. So that's an example of a franchisor listening to a franchisee. It's, it's a tough one because bus business or, or a capital environment is about capitalizing. And the, and the problem is that um, it's so much easier to work with the people that you know. And um, I mean, I think s uh, some more established brands even tend to do this, where as, so uh, as soon as there's an opportunity for a new franchise in their, in their brand, they offer it to someone that's already in-house because I know exactly how Monet works. And, and it's, it's, um, it, it, it's not something I agree with. Um, but but it, 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 then, it then makes it, it, makes it understandable why the cogs of, um, of transformation are turning so slowly. But then you get someone like me who is uh, more, who's more about opening up the table. And I think the opportunity comes in business people that are already in there, uh, work with. You can see someone that has a bit more of an entrepreneurial spirit, who's willing to take that risk, who is young and black, and um, uh, you, you just have to have a bit of faith in them. We have guys in our business that have been const that have been knocking on the door and saying that look, the next time you open one of these, um, find a way to put us in, and that's how actually the, the four way store came up, because you, we do Randberg and the next one, and and it's and you have to actually look at it a lot. Like we're actually de-risking ourselves, so let's let's look at transformation as as a way of actually de-risking our future endeavors, and people don't tend to do that. What is your signature cocktail, by the way? Uh, passion gin fizz. Oh, you're going to have to tell us that very quickly. <laughs> Look at Mornay's face. He's getting very excited. <laughs> oh, no, I really, <laughs> I, I really should. I want you, you must come to the space and tell you. Oh, don't worry. We're going, to, we're go, we're going well. to, uh, we're going to be there. How then do entrepreneurs, do potential uh, uh, franchisees make the case to the bank? I think everything starts with the business plan, mm -hmm. really, and, and the homework and the passion that you that you put into presenting your business plan. What are you the looking bank? for in the business plan? So, so you need to know what's going on. You need to understand what market you're entering in. You need to know your competition. I think that's extremely important. And then also explain to the bank what's your core business and, and then cash flow and then obviously access to capital. What type of financing options are available? What, what does a, French, a potential franchisee need to know? So the options is term loan funding, asset finance. Term loan funding, explain. It's normally funding over, over five years, 60 yeah. months. So you, you need to, and that's normally for an on-sale or resale of a business where the bank will evaluate the assets. There's a sale, there's a sale price and, and you, you come to an agreement with the buyer and the seller and, and we will fund that on a term loan and use the assets as security for the for the for the for the funding term loan what else 
terminal, you've got asset finance. That's where normally some the asset of the, the finance company will come in and evaluate the assets or it's new assets and we will fund the assets from a bank perspective. Then there's working capital, like running the ongoing uh, uh, expenses or the management of the business. And then in a lot of cases, there's always a guarantee. It can be vice versa, stock guarantee or a rental guarantee. In the case of obviously rentals these days are ex extremely high. So a lot of times these rental guarantees can be quite a big amount, which is, which is needed. How closely involved are you once it's wheels up? I mean, are you involved in the process? Yes. So, so, so we are involved, and we've got different phases in the bank. So, obviously, we've got, like we refer to the hunters. They are the deal makers, the guy that will sit with the franchisee on day one, putting the application together, putting the franchise applica or the, the application together for finance. Once the finance has been approved, we hand it over to a relationship manager that will work very closely with the franchisee going forward. So, and that's where we see that relationship between franchisee and bank is extremely important. Because actually the bank is a partner in your business. Um, and it's very important that the bank understands where they where they fit into this uh, into this relationship because we need to know or we need to be able to act quickly if the franchisee is in financial difficulty. Okay, Mori, let's continue talking about options if we can when it comes to financing. Um, entrepreneurs would ask the question, I imagine, between bank finance and microfinance. What's the advice? Maybe I'm the wrong person because I work for the bank. I understand, and, but you can give but, us uh, yeah, you can my, give us some my, cogent my, advice my, here. My, yeah. my honest advice is deal with, with, with someone that you know that takes your interest at heart and is not in it for the money. We as a bank, whenever we do finance, we look at funding sustainable businesses and we want to make sure that if we put someone in business, they will be successful. Uh, that's primarily what we want to do. Um, unfortunately, what, have, what I've seen, what I've experienced with some of the micro lenders out there is a very quick fix. It's very convenient. They walk into your shop, they give you money 24 hours later. But, you know, it's like they say in the fine print. Um, you end up paying back a loan, which is much more than what it would have been if, you, if you've gone through uh, the process at the so bank. So they don't necessarily have your best interests at all? Definitely not. Definitely not. And I think that's that's one advice I can give franchisees or potential entrepreneurs. You know, I'd rather do the hard work, do the business plan, do your homework. It's maybe a little bit longer, but I promise you the bank's got your interest at uh, at heart and it's not in there for a quick fix. Where micro lenders sometimes it's very quick, You seem it seems very convenient, but in the long run, it's not sustainable. You won't be able to service that loan. You, you, Wesley, have you, you found the hard. flashy lifestyle yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the fortune of uh, of it is that to the outside, it will look it will look a bit flashier, especially I mean when you're dealing with alcohol. So mm. um, it's a, everything is a cost, but you 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 see perhaps a potential customer and a potential big sale, and you look like uh, someone that's uh, handing out uh, expensive alcohols or certain things to certain people. But actually, in your head, you're doing it at you're doing it at cost price. You're doing it uh, also the potential of that bill. So you come in and um, you do things at the cost price, hoping to get them at the full sale price. <laughs> and someone will see that as you actually like living a, mm. living the great life. Uh, I gave Jeremy a free pizza. <laughs> but uh, we're hoping that yeah, we're Jeremy's gonna, we're gonna We're going to hold you to that. <laughs> we, we're not going to edit this out of the conversation. <laughs> so where do you see 86 Public in five years' time? I think we, we see it in um, in every province. Um, I think that um, part of building a business is actually tapping into those further that spider web of networks. And so, if we give uh, if we find space and we give opportunity to other people within our network, they have other people within their network. Mm. And um, we're we're hoping that just like we found a network of trust within them, they will also find the right type of people the right type of friends, fools, and family to support them and uplift them. We see ourselves in pretty much every sporting precinct, um, sporting business pre precinct in, in and around the country because and that then, suits and, our business. And then 10 years' time, London, Paris, New York. I challenge you, no. I'd, <laughs> I'd say, keep I'd, it local. <laughs> no, I'd, yeah, I'd say Tata. Yeah. I'd say... Um, Maybe not Lamu, but some somewhere else in Kenya, in Mozambique, there is a there is a lovely strip along yeah. the beach there. 
I'd, I'd challenge you to that and say there's actually people underrate how nice the urban spaces are in and around Africa and also some of those customers, especially ours actually, our, our customers are actually uh, like uh, this like cornucopia <laughs> of, um, of Africans. And that is the big thinking that entrepreneurs really need. Thank you for the inspirational story and thank you for putting the rivets and the joints to that story because it's critical that uh, a banking relationship is built on solid partnership. So Mwezi and Monet, thank you very much for joining me on Viewpoint. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. There you go. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Mwezi showed us that owning a franchise is possible and don't do it if you're not 100% in. Monet advised us that it's all about location, location, location. You must have a passion and you must be present. After the break, we want to hear from you, your thoughts and views on franchising as a business opportunity. Please talk to us via YouTube or uh, uh, Facebook Live. Listen to that franchise is all in my head. By posting in the comment section via Twitter at IAAESA using the hashtag IAAE Summit via data free stream. Send us on WhatsApp on 078 350 0768. See you after the break. <laughs> So does your bank help? Get my startup off the ground? F&B does. Oh, okay. With the first business zero account. But you've got a job. Office hours pay for my after hours. Ah, you mean side hustle. No, my business. And that's why I have a business account that has zero monthly account fee. All my swipes are free. Plus, I get data from F&B too. Wow. Wow is getting paid anyway. Work that hustle. I told you, it's not a hustle. It's a business. And that's why I'm with a business bank. Okay, I hear you. Does your bank help you start your business like that? Mine does. SA's Low Price Champion brings you SA's newest cellular network. Introducing Connect Mobile. Long life milk and low long life data with 60 days expiry. Sugar free? How about 100 megs free every month for six months? And with extra savings, you get up to 25% extra free airtime and data every time you recharge. Join Connect Mobile in store today and get what you've always wanted. Turn left in 100 meters. I don't need that. Dad, 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 turn left. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. And to those of you who are engaging us and talking to us, thank you very much for the comments. I'd like to read some. Here we have Lerato Gongo, says Kona with a big, uh, big ups. Um, and then we have Singisi Ziggy Ranaka, the content we need. And then we also have DJ Sonics Chalala. Um, and he says he's tuned in, looking forward to grow Nedula Clothing Company. Thank you very much. And we want more and more of you to interact with us. So if you are tuning in via our YouTube or Facebook Live, post in the comment section. If you're on Twitter at IAAESA using the hashtag IAAE Summit. And if you're joining us via our data free stream, send us a WhatsApp on 078. 350-0768. We would like to now speak to our guys in um, in Rustenburg. Yes, they're still here. They're still with us. Kitu, are you there? Definitely here. Um, and we've got a question from our lady in Dogozo who runs a printing and embroidery company. Um, she's got a question for Monet at FNB. Dogozo, ask your question. So my question is, um, I was Listening to Monet about the term loan funding, and he was mentioning that you can use assets to, to have funding. So um, I was interested to know specific assets. Can I take my skodong and put it in there? Or <laughs> <laughs> would they be like, yeah, specifics to those assets? Thank you. Thanks, Ndogozo. Just to repeat that question, Mati, Ndogozo wants to know from Monet, are there specific assets that you can use um, to secure your funding? Or can she also use her personal assets? If she's got personal assets, can she use those personal assets to get the funding for, for franchising? From Back to you, Mati. 
Thank you, Kutu. Got it. We've got those wonderful questions and we'll make sure that um, our Monet will be able to answer that. Create a business that is a talk of the town. Have customers talking and telling everybody about it. It's called word of mouth. We've decided to bring that to life in our summits by giving you, our entrepreneurs, the opportunity to tell us and everybody watching about your business. Check out these amazing entrepreneurs from around the country in our word of mouth segment. Hi everyone, my name is Katleho, KG Mamusela from Your Media. Your Media is a podcast network, but uh, we believe we're in the business of creating a more inclusive society, or at least contributing to making a more inclusive society through podcast content. And I think that's what makes us great. The fact that whilst we have uh, very niche content, right, we do intend to have a wide variety of content. So essentially, you will have a home. Uh, we always say to everybody that Your Media is where you are. So of course, you need to present as well. I am Katayako KG Mabusela and I am an entrepreneur. Hello, my name is Tembe Gamjali and I am the owner of My and Me. We make matching headgear and accessories for mother and daughter. And what makes us great is that we're able to form a part of that special bond simply through symbolism. My greatest learning experience as an entrepreneur, I'd say, is to create balance by sticking to a self-set timetable. I am Tembe Gamjali, and I am an entrepreneur. Hi, I'm Claire Johnson, and I'm the founder and curator of Nuclear, a hospitality consultancy. We focus on marketing and events, hotel openings and commercial strategies. Recently, we've also launched our digital nomad travel agency as well as our design studio that focuses on commercial interior design, architecture, as well as bespoke furniture. What makes Nuclear great? I think it's the fact that we have the philosophy that we always try to work in excellence. And that's from our internal systems and how we just carry ourselves to the work that we put out for our clients. And the fact that we're award-winning, I think, speaks testament to that. My biggest learning as an entrepreneur was during the pandemic. Um, the hospitality industry had come to a standstill and realized then that obviously diversifying our portfolio and in terms of what we do was extremely important. Um, we shifted our focus to assisting startups and brand development for businesses as well as individuals. And we were also fortunate enough to launch a subsidiary, Coco Collection, which is a wellness brand. I am Cleo Johnson and I'm an entrepreneur. <music> at that if you would like to be featured on our next word of mouth please write to us and tell us your entrepreneurial story where you are from what your business does and what makes you a unique entrepreneur email us on info at i'm an entrepreneur.co.za now this one is for the bookworms the entrepreneurs who are always striving to do better by knowing better the entrepreneurs who are self-determined as key and they understand that self-development is key to their business uh, success Hulisani Ravele, our resident bookworm, is up next and she interviews Joe Human, a creative consultant, to talk about some of the books that have helped him on his self-development journey as an entrepreneur. Take it away, Huli. Awe, Nendipu Hulisani Ravele. Welcome to On The Bookshelf. With me today, I am joined by creative consultant and the founder of Sea Mind Space, Shop Joe Human, as well as The Subtle Meetup. Hello, Joe. Welcome to hey. On The Bookshelf. Thank you for having me. So tell me, when it comes to reading, what is your relationship with books? Your honest relationship? So I'm not always the best person to ask that question because <laughs> I hardly <laughs> read. I read a lot of articles, mm -hmm. right? Um, which usually like pertain around the digital industry, the creative market and where that is going. I consume a lot of visual content like YouTube, um, documentaries as well. I think that's what makes today's On the Bookshelf so special because if it's a book that you've picked up as a visual person, that means it is a book worth reading. Which one should we start off with? We can start with Africa is Open for Business. Victor speaks about all the possibilities that are in the African continent that we as Africans don't necessarily see, right? Um, one of the things he speaks about is how Kenya, like the guys in Kenya, 
have progressed so much with technology, um, um, especially with mobile money, right? Where, and Besa, yeah. Exactly, right? We as Africans, we're finding innovative ways to actually move our continent forward. And it's, it made me look at business in a very unorthodox way, uh, especially for a creative, because we are so passionate about just doing what we love doing. It's my idea. It's, it's my way. Exactly, Nobody else could right? possibly do it better than me. Exactly. Um, having the perspective of how an actual business should be run and all the business opportunities that are in the continent and um, pushing me to actually find myself, like, where do I fit in as a creative in infiltrating those spaces? I think that's how it's it's been able to shape me. Yeah. I love it. Second book that is on your shelf, oh. How I Made Up My Job. That feels like literally something you did. <laughs> it's crazy because I was chatting to um, the chef before I got here um, <laughs> over a meal and, and we were talking about just entrepreneurship and how, you know, people have had to like start creating things for themselves, right? And I think this book by Rian is exactly that because he was part of a band um, then he left and he just could not find himself in any job that he did. He went through this self-discovery journey and just learning about himself. I feel that this book relates so much to me because there's times where I'd get asked, what do you do for a what do you? What do you like, do when you see Joe Human training? <laughs> Joe, what do you do? <laughs> I don't know what I do, but I think at the end of it, like at the core of it, is just being able to create experiences for the human being. Whether that's through visuals, whether that's through insights, events, whether, events you know, like I, I, I love being able to bring people into one space or make people consume something that can move them forward. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm a teacher, you know, um, to some How extent. you teach takes on different forms. Definitely, um, whether it's through a podcast, whether it's through a design, a brand strategy, whether it's through creating a product. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to find ways to communicate to the human being. The last book that has shaped you as an entrepreneur and an individual is one of those that is on the best-selling list, on the most yeah. read list, on the... You haven't read that list? Love. And that is Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. When I started reading the book, um, it was actually given to me by my visual arts teacher um, in grade 10. and he, You weren't ready for that, were I, you? I, I think I was, um, but I didn't know that I was, okay. right? Um, and I read the book and I found myself, right? It, 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 it positioned me towards my purpose and what I really needed to do. And so many lessons, um, especially from like a healing um, perspective, because there was just a lot going on at the time as well. And I think that book, one thing it taught me is to pace myself. Life is about seasons. There are people that, you know, are in their summer so these are people that look like you know they, they they're always popping on instagram you know, like everything is going so great and that might be their true reality but there are some people who are using that as a front because they're going through stuff right mm. and then there was me who was in my my winter where i was hibernating i was trying to figure a lot of stuff out constantly going back to the drawing board and i learned not to prematurely execute what I want to do. Don't, you know, don't feel that you need to be rushed yeah, because like of there's no their pressure. summer. Yeah. Like, you're your only competition. Ugh, love that book. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. That's so much pleasure. for, I don't really read. <laughs> you seem to have understood everything that is within all the covers that you have shared to, with me Thank so you. well. And I want to say to you, please don't stop teaching. Don't stop uh, being creative and don't stop being a dope human, Mr. Joe. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> always on the move and Joe taught us how he consumes his content in bite sizes. Africa is ready for business. That's definitely one of the books on my bookshelf. And of course, The Alchemist, Paolo Coelho, my favorite quote being, there is only one way to learn and that is through action. Thank you, Huli and Joe, you bookworms, you. We're taking a break um, and we'll be going into the blue chair. It's coming up next. The days I remember distinctly are the days I made mistakes. But what do you do when you make mistakes? You have to get up as quickly as you got onto that mistake and start moving into the trajectory. Hey, does your bank give you a guide on how to run your business? Yep, it's on Fundaba. 
which puts all I can learn about business right here. Fun what? Fundab. It's proper help on how to run my business. It's free on my FNB app, so I can learn on the go. Oh, like little tips. I wouldn't call learning how to get my pricing right to turn profit in one year, let's all. Mm, what's the catch? No catch. They just want my business to do well. Hmm, that's really something. Does your bank put a business coach in your hand? Mine does. Oh, it's mom. So we're driving. Oh, no, dad, it's hands-free. Hey, honey, don't forget to move. Oh, okay, honey, thank you. <laughs> SA's No Price Champion brings you SA's newest cellular network. Introducing Connect Mobile. Long life milk and low long life data with 60 days expiry. Sugar free? How about 100 megs free every month for six months? And with extra savings, you get up to 25% extra free airtime and data every time you recharge. Join Connect Mobile in store today and get what you've always wanted. Welcome back, wonderful people. Up next, Andila Kumalo is on the blue chair, and this is where he will have an intimate one-on-one -on -one with one of our country's dynamic entrepreneurs. We want you to get involved in the conversation via YouTube or Facebook Live, posting in the comment section, via Twitter, at IAAESA, using the hashtag IAAE Summit. And if you're on our free, uh, data-free stream, send us a WhatsApp on 078 350 0768. Rustenberg, please also get your questions ready. Hi, my name is Munwabi Sitete. I'm a serial entrepreneur, even though I hate that word. My biggest problem with uh, entrepreneurship is very simple. We leave our jobs and then you decide, oh, today I'm an entrepreneur. And it, it's actually not like that. So there's various facets to this thing. So for me, I, I need you to understand what you look at. So I don't look at this thing as an entrepreneur. I look at this thing as a system. You build a system, restaurants have managers, they've got owners, they've got supply chain, they've got distribution. All those things are very important when you start building your, your own thing. You know, the first rule they taught me was you, you, you don't have a business or a food and beverage or even a restaurant if you don't survive the first thousand days of it. I looked at this thing, I was like, whoa, a thousand days before I even make break even. That's three years, basically. So what do you do in instances like that where you know they've told you that this is a three to five year business before you even start looking at things? These days, people start businesses overnight and they want to be a success overnight. Well, food and beverage is not that space if you're going to be that kind of person. I think for me, franchising has started a long time ago. Um, the world is built around franchising, if we didn't know. I had to first get into the, the positive role of understanding what franchising is and what franchising does. And in order for me to get into the food and beverage space, I needed to understand the best in the game, how they do it, so that then I could implement my own strategies and put in my own systems in place. But I think you need a good base, you know. Um, I just didn't want to blow money because food and beverage is a lot of money, but if done right, it could make you a lot of money. So um, I always refer to, 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 to the franchising space in terms of the Jesus principle. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is the Jesus principle? Well, let's remove the religious side of it. Effectively, here's this guy, he comes in, he calls himself the Messiah. He says, I am the Messiah, you need to believe me. And then he takes 12 people and says, you guys come here, come believe in what I'm saying. You go sell it there, you go sell it there, you go sell it there, you go sell it there. That's what franchising is basically. It's making sure that the product is consistent anywhere you go around the world. So whether you're in Bangkok, you're in China, you're in Soweto, the product must remain consistent. And that's what we need to learn when we start businesses, is who's done it the best, and then you go learn from those people. How much do I know about food and beverage? Probably nothing. How much do I aspire to know about food and beverage? Nothing. But I understand numbers. And a franchise then is then able to assist you 
in understanding the product quality. They make sure that they check the product quality. They make sure that they introduce systems to you. How often do you keep your food on shelf? How often do you buy? How often? No one taught us those things, you know? We grew up in our spaza shops where uh, someone comes in, and, and that, that kind of system does not work within retail, you know? I call it first economy retail and second economy retail. Why do we not grow our businesses to be large scale? Is because we don't put in the good foundation. The deeper the foundation, the taller the building can go. So we need to start taking our time and accountability in terms of how you build your business. Here we go. Now, quick example. I do not drink coffee. I can't stand coffee. I can't fathom coffee. The only thing I like about coffee is that I make money from coffee and I make a lot of money from coffee. Why? Because I identified very early on that a lot of people like coffee. We grow our own coffee. People wake up and they drink coffee. Do you need to be passionate about coffee or consume your product? No. So for me, there's a lot of things that we kind of need to start teaching and also unlearning. You know, there's a lot of unlearning that one does. When you come into this space, they first teach you the principles of, of how you do things and what you're meant to do. So my advice would be don't start something because you're passionate about it. it I, I say it's the opposite. Start something that we don't need to wake you up in the middle of the night for. It's easy for us to, 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 to fall out of passion around something. I can never fall in and out of passion around coffee because I don't drink it but I can make money off it. I am passionate about what it does, the distribution, the love people have for it. Sometimes you need a business that people actually love, that you get into more than what you think, you know. Um, I, ve I have a very contentious feeling around and, and thinking around, for example, the Pakistani, the Somalian, the Bangladeshi stores. I looked at this thing and I'm like, okay, so these guys own our stores, right? a lot of the stores. I then built a bakery, an industrial bakery, that supplies bread, biscuits, scones to these Pakistani, Bangladeshi, and Somalian shops. They already got the distribution. So for me to try and pick up that distribution was irrelevant. But I plugged into a system that I knew is already happening. And, and this is now what I hope we get into with this I'm an Entrepreneur session because we need to kind of start speaking hard truths. Um, people are in the country. People are here to trade. People are here to, 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 to make money and make a living for their families. How then do we balance this thing? What does it look like? And, and, and how do we then project the next five to 10 years if you want to own a retail store, if you want to own a chain of, without any experience? When I started my business, I didn't have the money because that's what people did. I didn't have the money, I didn't have the resources, but I had the want, you know? So I know f &B is one of the sponsors of I'm an Entrepreneur. In fact, one of the guys who was there, I met him at an art exhibition. And I did my research about this person. I said to them, listen, I, this is the business I wanna get into. I don't have the money. I have the, I'd like to think I've got the qualifications, but that's as far as that would take me, right? And lo and behold, they listened to my story. And today I can safely say to you, I've paid off my loans, my franchise loans and all those things, but it, we have to start somewhere. But I think the pivotal mistake that we all make is to think that everything needs money. The days I remember distinctly are the days I made mistakes. But what do you do when you make mistakes? you have to get up as quickly as you got onto that mistake and start moving into the trajectory. I say learn fast, make mistakes fast and quickly. And let's get over it and let's move on. AK, welcome to the blue chair. How are you doing? 
I'm doing great. I'm excited. You look wonderful as usual. Thank By you. By the way, that's my job. My job is to <laughs> give you as uh, much props as possible oh. and so that, you know, you can continue being this wonderful Much opera. appreciated. And we are so looking forward to listening to the Blue Chair. Our guest sounds like he's fabulous. So what should we look forward to? Indeed, we're going to have a great chat with uh, Mr. Tete himself, restaurant here. Um, serial entrepreneur, although he hates the word, as he already said in his video, but I looked forward to a lot of insights, Matsi, about someone who's actually running a business in the franchising environment. Wonderful. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Matsi. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking forward to a great conversation with Mr. MT, as I call him. And, and really, I want to frame it around his own experience, particularly when it comes to how he started. Many of us get stuck with the beginning. Everything else you kind of learn once you're on the path, but oftentimes it's really difficult to get going. So after this ad break, we're going to go straight into a conversation with Mr. Monwabisi Tete. So does your bank help get my startup off the ground? F and B does. Oh, okay. With the first business zero account. But you've got a job. Office hours pay for my after hours. Ah, you mean side hustle? No, my business. And that's why I have a business account that has zero monthly account fee. All my subs are free. Plus, I get data from F and B too. Wow. Wow is getting paid anyway. Work that hustle. I told you it's not a hustle. It's a business, and that's why I'm with the business bank. Okay, I hear you. Does your bank help you start your business like that? Mine does. Dad, it's got reverse camera. Come on. <laughs> SA's low price champion brings you SA's newest cellular network. Introducing Connect Mobile. Long life milk and low long life data with 60 days expiry. Sugar free? How about 100 megs free every month for six months? And with extra savings, you get up to 25% extra free airtime and data every time you recharge. Join Connect Mobile in store today and get what you've always wanted. Welcome back, guys. We do have Munovi Sitete already sitting on the blue chair, ready to take your questions. So please make sure you send us your questions as much as possible. If you're on the social media platforms, hashtag IAAE Summit, and of course, at IAAESA on all the social media platforms. If you are streaming, of course, on our data free line, the number is there 07835. 0768 and I'll be getting all of your questions on my unit over here and I'll be making sure I pose them to my man here. MT, how Thank are you buddy? You. I'm strong brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. Great video. You looked a lot better than you are in actual real life. Eh? You guys really made me look good. I was <laughs> like, hey, is that the same person? Can we start at the beginning MT because many people get stuck with the beginning. Yeah. What was the beginning like for you? You kind of touch on your little story about how you harassed FNB. Yeah. But for many of us listening out there, our biggest issue is getting going. Yeah. We probably have an idea of the franchise we want, but all we really want is how do I start? Right. So to pick some leaves from your book, how do we start? How do we get going? Look, I, I think the first one is, is a mindset. Um, being surrounded by the right people. Um, also, admitting that we don't have a history in franchising. Mm. I think that was the first thing I needed to admit to myself, is that I don't have a history, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I want to get into that space. Mm. So the start is really a mindset, um, and, and as well asking a lot of questions, because we don't ask a lot of questions. We, when you start business, you must pretend like you know everything. Yes, of course. You know, I know this, I know so and so, I know this, I know that, and this is the complete opposite. Because we don't have a point of reference for it. But who do you ask? Oftentimes people don't have anybody to ask. I, I think the brands themselves. Um, a lot of people must learn how to do homework. We, we, we must learn how to do homework. We must learn to say, okay, I want business X. Yeah. How do I start? You go to those people. But you don't now go and ask them basic questions that are on Dr. Google. I see. Right? I see. You, you, you check out, you do your research, and then you go back to... To, to the franchising division, for example, at the bank and say, right, F and B, this is what I'm looking at. Is it in your list of, of people that you, you, you franchise? 
what are the requirements from a banking perspective or from fine or any finance house, right? And then you move to the franchise and say, right, what's your spec? So if I want to be a franchisee, mm. you give me a checklist of all the I things see. I require. Now, let's give, give us a sense of where you're at now, how, how many restaurants and which franchises <laughs> in your career have you been involved in, in terms of brands? Look, it uh, doesn't matter what brand it is. Uh, it does matter. From a franchising perspective, it does matter because you, A, you have to pay that money back. Got you. And B, you have to be in a brand that can bring the return on investment and pretty quickly, right? You know, the first thing I heard uh, when I got to Famous Brands, for example. Yeah. So which brands did you get from Famous Brands? So I got the Mug and Bean. Mug and Beans. Yeah. So the first thing they said to me is, can you survive the first thousand days? They're like, are you prepared not to take a salary? Are you prepared to adjust yourself up until your business then gets... Now that's three years. So imagine living three years and you don't bring in a regular income or your income is not as guaranteed. So are you saying you before I even think of getting my own franchise, I must have at least three years of being able to live without expecting any income from this, call it startup franchise? Yes and no. Um, the yes is yes. <laughs> okay. Um, because you see, what, what the mistake we make is to think I'm gonna start a business, but then all my personal expenses kind of must be paid through the business. Then, then you're operating a, a manga manga business. Gotcha. Right? First economy businesses require first economy thinking. They don't think of your pocket. They think of the business. So you don't, if you had a baby, yeah. right, a newborn, you make sure that the newborn eats before you eat. And we do it the other way around. We want to eat as the we parents. We want to eat as the parents. While the child is starving. Whilst the child is starving. <laughs> then when the child is crying, you are wondering why the child is crying. <laughs> okay, on that note, we saw Legends Barbershop. Yeah. And it, it was someone who came up with an idea yeah. and has built scale. Yeah. We don't often see brand new franchisors because yeah. he's a franchisor. Yeah. Oftentimes we go to the big brands as you already said. Yeah. What in your opinion is the challenge with creating your own brand and scaling it into a franchise? What are the things that you need to solve for to be able to be the next Legends Barbershop? Yeah. The first one is understanding that it's not about you. Right. When you understand that I'm not always going to be the hero in my business, it, it removes the pressure off you. So the first thing you need to do is set up the damn system. I wish I could swear. Mm. But you set up the system. Got you. you make sure that the foundation is solid. The deeper the foundation, the taller the building can go, right? So he first went to start his own. He went to store number two. He went to store number three. And, and then he was like, okay, I kind of get the system. Now to bring products from your, call it your warehousing, right? Into those stores has got to be a systematic. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's pause there for now, MT. Thank you so much for that. Of course, we, we are still continuing the conversation and taking your questions. So make sure you're ready for it. Rustenberg, we're going to be coming to you as well. The deeper the foundation, the taller the building. Let's take a short break. didn't have to drive here. The all-new Renault Triber. Space for everything. Renault, most fuel-efficient brand in SA. SA's low-price champion brings you SA's newest cellular network. Introducing Connect Mobile. Long-life milk and low long-life data with 60 days expiry. Sugar-free? How about 100 megs free every month for six months? And with extra savings, you get up to 25% extra free airtime and data every time you recharge. Join Connect Mobile in store today and get what you've always wanted. Welcome back, you guys. And of course, we're going to go straight to Rustenburg. Kitu, you got a question out there. We have a question from Memaina. Memaina, please ask your question to Munwabisi. How do you make sure that these very customers that you have, you keep them and you keep attracting even more? My second question um, is around, it's, it's about 
uh, you know, I'm overcoming your fear. You know, when you have to start a business, you don't have funds, you don't have money, you go to the bank, they give you the money. Uh, already you have this debt over your head. Now, how do you overcome that fear and make sure that you go into the, this business and become successful? Thank you. Thank you, Memaina. Back to you in studio, Eken Munwabisi. All right, thank you so much for those questions, Kito. Let me repeat them for you, MT. Yeah, look, thanks for those questions. Uh, I think the first one is because we're talking franchising, so I'm going to wear two hats today. I'm going to be an independent person building a business towards franchise. And then there's the franchise hat. The beauty of franchise is, you know, if, for example, you take on a McDonald's, right? You don't need to worry about your customer base because McDonald's has the customer base they've built the equity behind that business to then worry. So as a franchise, franchise, franchisees don't have to worry about business plans. You don't have to worry about customer bases. You don't have to worry about making sure that the store is, is built a certain way because that intellectual property comes as a result of you being a, franchise, a, a franchisee. The franchisor guarantees you marketing, royalty type of setup, uh, all that. So don't worry when you take a franchise business. You shouldn't worry about those things. Sit because back in your chair. Because the brand has been built. Because the brand has been built. Um, and, and that's the beauty of getting... Of, being, of being in the franchise in the first place. Yes. There's fear? Let's talk fear. Fear is, is, is inevitable. It's an uh, ever-present danger. It's, it's with you every day. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. <laughs> Uh, fear is, is I, I think even now, the fear of, of having to go into my own shop sometimes and not knowing what to expect yeah. is still there. So I, I think fear is, is something we can't really move out. It, it lives with you and, and, and the more you have tick boxes. So yeah. when you have a list yeah. of things that you actually want to achieve, it's easier to then say, okay, fear, today you're gonna sit here because uh, you know, for example, I, I, I make an, an example. So every day I see three people. I don't phone people. I don't phone. I see three people. And if I see 15 people a week, right, that's 60 people a month. Yeah. You can't tell me from 60 people a month, I can't get a business transaction from these people. Now, that, that then eliminates my fear of gotcha. having to, to sell, for example. Got you. Got you. Loud and clear. All right. We've got a lot of questions also coming through um, for FNB. And thank you, Morne, for being available this morning to answer the questions. Let me go with the first one. And uh, it came from Wayne Chauke. Wayne was asking a question. What is the criteria used by banks to fund the other 50% after the encumbered down payment? And the question for Morne from FMB is that it depends on the financial position of nuances of specific stores. We would need to validate affordability, and there might be security or collateral even required. Also, the franchise agreement and lease agreement must cover the period or the tenure of the loan. Another F&B or banking question is from, um, well, is also from Wayne. Working capital is often a hidden cost in franchising. Do you recommend franchisees get a business or a personal loan for the working capital? Morning from F&B has responded. He said, we can include working capital facilities for the franchise as part of the lending solutions. And lastly, from Monet, uh, rather from uh, for FNB to Monet, uh, Monet, will FNB finance a new business in a rural area looking now at socioeconomic impact? And uh, that was from Olga in Rustenburg. And the response was FNB does fund new franchise setups in rural areas. However, we would need to validate once again the viability, the brand, and the franchise or support. Keep the questions coming. I'll make sure I pose as many to MT as possible. MT, I gotta ask you a question about location. Yeah. You know, many people say, you know, for a franchise to really survive, you need to make sure that it's in the right spot. How would I know what the right spot is? <laughs> Once again, uh, the franchisor will say, I want a place that's X 
that's got minimum of traffic, uh, foot traffic of X amount of people. So the criteria is very detailed. This is not a, I feel like doing this today and therefore they'll change the rules. Those rules have been there for, for the longest period and they know their type of clientele and their demographics to whom they speak to. So when you look for a site, they would have given you the checklist Got you. to say, right, this is the area we're looking at. This is the foot traffic and this is the, well, we used to call it LSM, which has gotten, but now it, it, this is the type and caliber of people that consume our property. All right, you guys. So we're going to go off to Ratzenberg. Seems we've got more questions coming over there. I'm loving the remote locations, by the way. Hi, Andile. We definitely have a lot of questions this side. And I'm here with Kauhelo. Kauhelo actually is a King Pie franchisee, and she's got a question for Munwabis. Kauhelo. How did you manage to start a franchise without money? I want you to, to if you can explain more, especially for people who don't have capital to start um, the business on franchising. My second question will be, mm -hmm. how did you uh, survive the first thousand days <laughs> without salary from uh, you have the, uh, the franchise business? Thank you. Um, so what Kaukala was asking is that, firstly, how did um, Munwabi C survive the thousand days without capital? Um, so that was the second question. And her first question was, really, really, she wants to know, and she wants to also um, know this for other entrepreneurs that are looking to go into franchising. How did he fund the business if he didn't have money? Because a lot of the time, um, a lot of franchise, potential franchisees are trying to get into the space, but they don't have money or funds to start. Uh, the, the first question is, how did I start? Yeah. Uh, I because didn't have money. Yeah, how do you start without yeah, money? I She's didn't confused. Have money. So she runs her own uh, franchise, by the way. Right. It's a King Pie franchise out in Rustenburg. And she's listening to this guy going, you had no money? Yeah. I had a good site. So I went to the bank. I said, guys, this is a no-brainer. Okay? I don't have the money. I have a good site. I don't need to market to people because people come to the site. Right? So I then said, I have the qualifications. So worst case scenario, I fall back and I pluck out, right? Here's the fear coming through again. You, you, you make sure that you can then recover the funds that you've borrowed from the finance institution. Got you. Right? So the first thing they would want, what can they secure? Right? What can they bond? The type of equipment that's going to be used. What franchise are you looking for? Because some franchises give really good return on investment. So when you're saying, I've got a reliable franchisee, franchisor, they're like, okay, who's the franchisor? Then they've got the tick boxes that gotcha. the franchisor requires. Gotcha. So then it, it was easier for me to, to go literally beg my bank because I, I got declined. Okay. You know, a lot of people don't understand. My first three applications to my bank, I got declined. I had my bond with them. I had my car with them. I had my student loans that I'd paid So off. is it a good idea to start with your own personal bank? Yes. Because they're likely to listen to you, you've because got a record, especially if you've been maintaining a good record. Correct. At Tete, what was the most unexpected challenge you encountered in the early years of your franchising? So think back, yeah. the very first franchise, yeah. and the one thing that you thought you'd done all the, all the research. I walked to the meeting because I knew I had to buy coffee for the person I'd asked. I see. To come and see me, right? So I didn't have the money. And I sat there, and there was a deadline of franchise fees of midnight at such and such a point. All right. I'm going to ask you to pause. We're going to go on a quick ad break. Uh, of course, we'll still continue the conversation with Mr. Tete. Wait after this. So does your bank help? Get my startup off the ground. F&B does. Oh, OK. With the first business zero account. But you've got a job. Office hours, pay for my after hours. Ah, you mean side hustle. No, my business. And that's why I have a business account that has zero monthly account fee. All my swipes are free. Plus, I get data from F&B too. Wow. Wow is getting paid anyway. Work that hustle. I told you, it's not a hustle. It's a business. And that's why I'm with a business bank. OK, I hear you. Does your bank help you start your business like that? Mine does. Dad, it's got reverse camera. Come on.
<laughs> SA's low price champion brings you SA's newest cellular network. Introducing Connect Mobile. Long life milk and low long life data with 60 days expiry. Sugar free? How about 100 megs free every month for six months? And with extra savings, you get up to 25% extra free airtime and data every time you recharge. Join Connect Mobile in store today and get what you've always wanted. Welcome back, you guys. We continue our conversation with MT. Lots of questions coming also on the wires. Let me take one that's coming from Yap van der Vestazen. He's asking Morne from FNB. Is the longest term five years or 10 years for a loan for a franchise? And the response from Morne is that we can consider loans for up to five years in terms of a business term loan and up to 10 years in terms of a property loan. On that question, though, MT, you also talked about the fact that You've also had these loans and you've repaid them. Yep. Do you recommend a short loan or a long loan? You know, a long loan obviously means I pay less every month. Yep. Uh, a short-term loan also means that I save on interest and I pay off the loan uh, quicker. What, what would you advise? In a short nutshell, the less time you need to pay it off, the better. Simple. All right. Next question. Before I go to Rustenburg, I've got Brian and Drove here asking. He's in Durban. He's got two questions for you. He's saying, what are the steps to follow when buying a franchise? I think you've answered that. What are the steps to follow when you want to set up the franchise? Now, that one, we haven't spent enough time talking about. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, you, you need to, like legends, you need to promise. You, you, what's your brand promise? What's your brand delivery? And how many stores does the head office have that uh, the model can be built around? Because all you need to do is duplicate the system, right? At, at molecular level. And also, the, the power of the franchise is the, the buying power that you have behind the stores. So for example, I'll take famous brands because I know the system. They have, a, a, you, you can't buy stuff on your own in a franchise. You buy it within their parameters and, and their, their kitty. Sort of, they create their own shop at the back end. Because that's how they can promise consistency. That's how they can promise that uh, the product you get, be it in Bangkok or, 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 or Joburg or wherever, is consistent. Product, product, product. So last question from me to you, um, um, MT. Franchising appears to be a little safer start. It, the system is already built for you. It seems like a logical thing if you're gonna run your own business. But then there's, you might get lucky with one how do i scale now how does how did mt go from one to ten look franchising you know uh, i always say you don't go to uh, mcdonald's and make your own burger yes right it's clear it's clear if it takes x amount of time to do your burger then you 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 that's that's how it's done so the the there's different types of franchising as well you can have a single type of franchise you can have a multi, so single means one store, yeah. right? You can have multi uh, platform, so you can have five or six, for example, franchises from the same brand, right? Then, you, then there's something called a franchise master license, where you give that person permission to use the IP to, you know, th that's how. So for me, to develop the consistency around that, you, you need to be able to have your own stores to then say, okay, I've got a working concept. This is how it's done. This is how it's planned. And, and this is how I can then roll it out. So if I'm interested with all sorts of ideas, I want to yeah. do new things, um, you know, after I've got my franchise, I want to introduce all sorts of things. The point is I can't. Yeah. The model works, the models work globally, and that's the model you have to follow. So if you struggle with following instructions, yeah. I guess franchising isn't for you. Franchising isn't for everybody. Franchising is definitely not for everybody. It, it's, a, it's a place where you pay school fees. So I didn't know, for example, you, your food costs, right? You need to run at 38% cost of sales. 38% cost of sales? Yeah, between 38 and let's say 40. Right. Now, if I had started on my own, I wouldn't have known how to cost food. <laughs> I wouldn't have known what percentages I need to make in order for me to, to reach a certain threshold. I didn't know any of that, mm. right? So food costs, how do you maintain? How do you make sure that the freshness, how long do you keep that product for? So all those kinds of things, 
uh, franchising teaches you. But equally, you've got to be willing to learn. Franchising is a safer space to, you pay to learn because you're paying someone else to learn and you're paying someone to alleviate a lot of mistakes. So I always say to people who want to start their own franchise, great, we need a lot more, right? And we need to introduce finance houses to make sure that we get more franchisors apart from the big franchise. Got you, got right. you, got you. But you also need to have a compelling story and a compelling brand for people to want to come and get your brand. So uh, stories like Legends, yeah. we take our hats off to. Yeah. Because he's, he's learned it, he's learned fast, and he's, he's now spread what he knows. So it doesn't now ask a lot out of him. He then just has to give them the principles and the, the systems to then run and those, those people stores. follow the rules. And the training. All right, loud and clear. MC, let me stop it right there because you and I can go on all morning. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, my brother, for making the time to be here. We really appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. All right, Matsi, well, that brings us to the end of why we are here. We're so grateful to all of you that have joined us today and we hope that you take away as many impactful um, insights as possible. But before we go, we must leave you with some pearls of wisdom. So you've got this bright idea that you want to go out there and franchise. You will be the franchise or others will be the franchisees. Have you ever thought, how do I get it off the ground? Is there even a chance that I could bring partners who already know and understand and have a brand name and leverage in the markets to help me get things like the property that I need? Well, Candace Thurston, the founder of Candy & Co. did exactly that. Check it out. So looking at the landlord experience within a brand, I think the key thing is not so much about whether the brand is a brand for women of color or not. It's about putting a very good business plan together, making sure that you have a brand. You know, we spent quite a lot of investment just designing the logo. Um, understanding the colors, understanding the CI. And I think that's obviously from my background with the Unilever at MTN, but you're basically taking, you know, a skeleton of a person and you're now saying, let me put, you know, the, the look of it, the makeup and the clothing in. That's what we developed for the brand. So if you're going to go to a landlord, it wasn't about who's the brand for, who's the target market. It was about show us the brand, show us what the store is going to look like. What is it going to offer? Is there going to be a menu? You know, what are the financials of the business? Um, so the key key thing was really showcasing that to the landlords that we went to um, and my advantage was that you know I really didn't understand you know how to sign a lease agreement or how to build a store. Partnering with Sobey has made me you know launch seven stores in less than three years compared to I think you know doing it on my own um, making much more mistakes and probably only opening half of the stores at the time so I think understanding that 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 partnership and understanding take your business seriously put lots of work behind it you you should not have problems with with landlords and then get experienced people even if it's not your partner get experienced people to help you read your lease agreements help you negotiate so that you really get into something that will work for you Entrepreneurship is not for everybody. It is for those who dare to dream. It is for those who dare to make it happen. It's not fun and glamorous when you have to start from scratch and build. Today we spoke at length about franchising as a business opportunity. It's one way of getting into business, leverage brand equity, customer development, and an existing business network. Hopefully we've planted many, many seeds in your head and give you practical ways of how to build a franchise. We're now going to cross over to Rustenburg for a quick goodbye. Gitu, talk to us. It's been a very insightful morning and thank you to all our guests and all the lessons learned. And what we're taking out of this year in Rustenburg is that one, ask lots of questions. You don't always know the answers, so ask the people that know. Two, find out about the funding that you require because there is funding available. You just need to ask about it. And lastly, the fear will always be there. So start anyway with the fear that you have. And thank you so much to our lovely entrepreneurs at Rustenburg. Next month, we'll be in the beautiful city in Bloemfontein. Going to Bloemfontein in winter. So we'll get our, co we'll get our coats ready and we're looking forward to hosting you in Bloemfontein for the June summit. Thank you, Mati. Back to you. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Kitu. Well, Bloemfontein is my hometown and I know how freezing it is. As we draw to an end, we want you to enjoy more of us and more of our insights. So for more digital content and insights on entrepreneurship, visit www.iamanentrepreneur.co.za. Our next summit will be held on Saturday the 19th of June. Look out for more information on our website and our social media platform. Invite your friends, your colleagues and make the circle bigger. We are a generous bunch and before we leave, we want you to stand a chance to win a laptop and an I am an entrepreneur hamper. Be sure to complete our survey. If you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, check the comment section for the link. Uh, and if you're streaming via our data-free platform, we will send you an email with the link. <sighs> Till next time, from I am an entrepreneur, I am your host, Matsi Mudise. Goodbye. Hey, does your bank give you a guide on how to run your business? Yep, it's on Fundaba, which puts all I can learn about business right here. Fun what? Fundaba. It's proper help on how to run my business. It's free on my FNB app, so I can learn on the go. Oh, like little tips? I wouldn't call learning how to get my pricing right to turn profits in one year little. Mm, what's the catch? No catch. They just want my business to do well. Hmm, that's really something. Does your bank put a business coach in your hand? Mine does. The I Am An Entrepreneur Summit is brought to you in association with FNB and our partners.